Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, April 27th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. On April 1st, WSO2, a company that uh, deals with sort of platforms and APIs, including an open banking and open medical records uh, API, released details regarding a vulnerability that was originally discovered by Orange Tsai. Orange Tsai, of course, famous uh, for discovering a number of high-profile vulnerabilities in the past. The vulnerability CVE 2022-29464 that affects multiple products does allow arbitrary file uploads and with that also remote code execution. These products are quite popular, even if you may not necessarily have heard of them. And earlier this week, CISA announced that they added this vulnerability to their list of already exploited vulnerabilities. Well, and one of our handlers, uh, Renato, uh, did actually run into an exploit for this vulnerability in an incident that he was dealing with. And it was, of course, a crypto mining case. So uh, Renato did write up what he found and how the exploit uh, was delivered in this particular case. A web shell was installed and then the web shell was used uh, to download XMRIC, the good old crypto coin miner and then execute it. Proof of concept exploits have actually been made available on April 1st when the patch was originally released. So no big surprise here that we see this exploited. And we have some news about the VMware Workspace One Access vulnerability. This vulnerability was first identified and patched on April 6th, uh, now on April 11th, uh, there was then an initial proof of concept release. Then two days later, actually exploitation was spotted in the wild. Now, typically when it comes to new vulnerabilities, you first have a little bit more targeted hacks in some cases. Sometimes the uh, crypto coin miner kits are pretty quickly. And one indication that uh, things are sort of have taken their course and the vulnerability has sort of lost its luster and the attackers are now looking for some unexploited crumbs. It's usually a headline like we're seeing from MorpheSec here that Iranians were spotted implanting the core impact backdoor via that vulnerability. So again, this is VMware Workspace One Access. Of course, there are a number of other VMware products uh, that have been exploited heavily uh, this year, uh, like, uh, for example, vCenter and such. This is a different uh, type of uh, product. Just in case you're running it, uh, make sure that you are up to date. And yesterday I mentioned a flaw in Virus Total. Today actually uh, we uh, got an update from Bernardo Cintero, uh, one of the founders of Virus Total, clarifying the statements made by the original uh, discovery here. The problem uh, was that the actual flaw was not with any of Virus Total's systems. So uh, these uh, researchers they uploaded uh, malicious files to Virus Total. Nothing special, of course course with that and then discovered that the code that they embedded in those malicious files was executed uh, consistent with an exif tool vulnerability. However, execution did not happen on VirusTotal's machines. Instead, what happens is that VirusTotal is partnering with uh, various companies. These companies receive feeds of uh, malware that's being uploaded to virus total and then they are executing it on their systems and that's where exploitation happened so uh, these were various likely security companies not really clear what company was actually here vulnerable that received these samples and then on their systems the actual vulnerability was exploited Pretty much the same as if you would download one of the samples and then run it through EXIF tools on your own system. 
And on Monday, I talked about how Emote had apparently had some issues this weekend, where they released a version that actually didn't install any malware due to a bug in the code, which they later fixed. Proofpoint is now reporting that Emotet is also delivering um, different types of payloads. Uh, historically, Emotet was one of the big botnets that always relied very heavily on macros in Office documents. This, of course, is is getting a lot more difficult. Excel 4 macros have been deprecated. Then also we now had Microsoft announce that macros will no longer, the Visual Basic macros will no longer uh, be executed if a document was downloaded from the internet. Well, uh, the latest trick they're experimenting with is XLL files. These are kind of like DLLs, but for Excels, and then enable uh, them to do the same tricks where they are using these Excel files to download and execute additional malicious code. So attackers are certainly adapting, and yes, definitely watch out for XLL files. I don't really see a good reason why a file like this would be, for example, an email attachment. Now, in this case, they're actually downloading it uh, from a OneDrive uh, file that uh, they're using here to spread the malware. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening, and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.